What's going on, y'all? It's the kid Jay Nolan here. Hey, man. Got some news for y'all that I definitely was not expecting to see out there, but, you know, looks like Rick Roll just got Rick Rolled. You feel me? And if you know what I'm talking about, you know the famous song, Never Gonna Give You Up, Never Gonna Let You Down. You know, that's the Rick Roll where somebody basically baits you into something online and then that video comes up or that song plays. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It still happens every now and then. Rick Astley, aka Mr. Rick Roll, got Rick Rolled recently by uh, artist Young Gravy, alleging that the rapper impersonated his voice without getting legal authorization. And this took place on his 22 single, Betty, AKA Get Money. This is not a situation of copyright infringement because Young Gravy actually uh, legally interpolated the song. Uh, they went through all of the proper channels in order to get clearance. However, he's saying that the interpolation is almost a spot on impersonation, basically saying that you can't even tell the difference. It's a deliberate and indistinguishable imitation throughout the song. That's the terminology that he used. And he says that this constitutes as unauthorized and intentional theft. Rick Ansley ain't playing with y'all. He went off and hired the same lawyer that sued Robin Thicke, Pharrell, and T.I. for blurred lines on, on uh, the behalf of the Marvin Gaye estate. He went and got the same lawyer that basically got that money up out of them. With that case, there was no sampling involved. There wasn't really an interpolation involved. It was just a groove that was somewhat similar to what Marvin Gaye had done, but it was not an identical track. But the Marvin Gaye estate still ended up winning that case and getting a nice amount of money. The judgment was for $7 million and it was later reduced to $5.3 million. So I'm guessing Rick Astley's like, hey, if I could get a piece of that, I need that in my life, which I can't necessarily be mad at, you know what I mean? Especially if you hear the track and it sounds exactly like you. According to the lawsuit, it states, the imitation of Mr. Astley's voice was so successful, the public believed it was actually Mr. Astley singing and or a direct Sample. Gravy said he tried but failed for years to obtain a sound recording sample license, Astley's attorneys claim. So instead, they resorted to the theft of Mr. Astley's voice without a license and without agreement. Now, this lawsuit was filed on Thursday, January 26th, and they're actually citing a famous 1988 legal battle between Ford Motor Company and Betty Midler. They wanted to use one of her tracks or her voice on a Ford commercial. They were not able to obtain her actual authorization, so they went and hired somebody to impersonate her, and uh, it didn't work out so well for Ford back in 1988 either. To drive the point home further, it says, uh, as the Betty Midler court found, more than 30 years ago, in one of the most famous cases in the music business, a license to use the original underlying musical composition does not authorize the stealing of the artist's voice in the original recording. To use the artist's voice, the creators of a new recording need a license to copy the actual sounds of the voice from the sound recording, a so-called sample license of the actual sounds of the voice from the sound recording. To be perfectly honest, I'm not sure how this is going to go because they did go through the proper channels to get an interpolation license. OK, now with an interpolation that gives you the creative license to basically go replay the music that's being heard. So just to keep it simple, like if I wanted to remake a Jay-Z song, right, let's just use an example like Give It To Me, I Just Want To Love You with Pharrell singing, you know, I'm a hustler, baby. I just want you to know, like, if I go off and I say, hey, man, I sampled y'all on this song, Jay-Z, Pharrell, and all of them, whoever their lawyers are, their legal team says, no, you can't sample that. It's going to cost you, you know, $500,000 plus 100% of the royalties to sample. And then I would have to convene with my legal team and be like, okay, well, what if we just re-sing it ourselves? Then they'll go to the proper people get the uh, interpolation license, which is different from a sample. I would go re-sing it my dang self. That's what the interpolation allows you to do. So I'm not really sure what Rick Astley really wants, you know what I mean? Because it's not his actual voice. They didn't take his sample and you got the sound recording, which is the master. I always talk to y'all about this. The master, which is the audible song that you hear when you press play, but then you have the underlying composition, which is the words, the lyrics, the musical notes, the actual sheet music that would take, like if you were to compose this on a piano or a guitar, however you do it, you know what I'm saying? 
that's basically like the instruction to creating the sound recording. So when you get an interpolation license, you're basically getting access to the composition so that you can create a new recording, which is essentially what Young Gravy did because they re-sung it. Now you can't tell somebody, oh, you could re-sing it, but don't sound too close to my voice. The only way that you can verify is if you go into the court and say, that's literally me. Like you would have to go into the court without a reasonable doubt, without any shadow of a doubt that they sampled your voice against the actual clearance that you gave them. Like this would be a situation where they said, yes, you can interpolate it, but then they went into the studio and just ripped his voice anyway. You know what I'm saying? Basically under the impression that, oh, the interpolation allows us the chance to sample, which is two different things, right? I hate that I sound like I'm talking in circles, but this music industry mumbo jumbo, man, it gets real deep. It gets very precise. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes people lose out on potential bread because if this is the way that the rule is set up and structured and you signed off on it, you can't tell me that I can't sing it the way you did. Unless you put it in paper that I can't do it, that I would have to manipulate it and make it clearly distinguishable. There's so many different instances of people that resung songs throughout the history that, yeah, it may sound close, but you, you could tell, okay, dang, that's not the original. Oh, wow. It sounds just as good. So I don't know if Rick Astley going to win on this one, man. I'm going to kind of keep an eye out to see how this thing develops, but I feel like Young Gravy is probably going to come out on top with this one. Let me know what you guys think of this down below in the comments for all my music lawyers out there. You know, sometimes when I talk about copyright infringement and stuff like that, I do end up getting people that work in legal, in the music industry that chime in. I would love for y'all to actually come in and, you know, give me some commentary being in that position. You know what I mean? Y'all working with that paperwork all the time. But let me know if you feel, if you agree with what I'm saying, if I missed anything, whatever. Everyone else, let me know how you feel about this. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the post notification bell for all updates. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right? Much love and respect, y'all. Peace. Got my legal hustle. Welcome to the trap. I can blow a stack, but I make it back. You can hit my line if you need a track. But we can't even talk if it ain't about the bat. Got my legal hustle, welcome to the trap. I can blow a stack, bet I make it back. You can hit my line if you need a track. But we can't even talk if it ain't about the bat.